All right, finally got it on here. Weighs a lot. Had it 20 years. Didn't, you know, I always wanted to photograph it, but I just kind of never had the time, never that inspiration, right? So I've seen Rome series on Netflix. Man, they have some awesome, awesome lighting techniques in that show. So that, once I get done watching that, I'm like, wow, I mean, I might be able to spend some time photographing this. So wildlife photography, I really like. Studio is right up there with it. It's kind of yin and yang. Um, reason why is it, they're like polar opposites, right? So studio photography, you got a huge softbox here, there. I can control just about everything. And in wildlife photography, I can tr control very little, you know, sun in my back, this, I can do some things, but it's kind of like control and chaos, like polar opposites, yin and yang. And speaking of that, all that philosophy stuff, let's, uh, let's get this statue cleaned up and see what we can do with it. Okay, so we got the statue set up here. I'll be photographing this with the DP3 Quattro. It's a 40 megapixel APS-C sensor, all in one, actually point and shoot. So yeah, it's, it's very close to, I would say medium format, about as close as you're gonna get. Probably, yeah, it's the most highest resolution, sharpest pixels you'll see in a camera system, just FYI, but I'm gonna photograph it with this. And actually, I'm gonna throw a little twist in here. I have the um, Samsung, let me see here, Samsung S20 Ultra. So they say 108 megapixels. I might try to do some continuous lighting here, shots with this cam with this system as well. Do a little comparison, but just see if I can photograph it with a camera as well. Kind of show you guys the photos at the end. Anyway, let's get going. Okay, you got the camera set up, ISO 100, F8, um, huge softbox, or I should say very large softbox, probably 50 inch softbox over the top of it. What I'm trying to create or you're gonna look at is more of a dramatic lighting, like top down lighting. So monastery feel, very dark, kind of grungy, but at the, but the core of it is you have, let's say a hole in the ceiling where just a, a pillar of light or some light just kind of falls on the subject. Got a back background right here, and uh, yeah, let's let's see what we get here. All right, after a couple shots, um, it's very clinical. See what we're seeing is we got a soft box. There's really no contrast. There's no shadows. There's nothing really dramatic about that top-down lighting. It's a very large soft box, very large source. So I'm going to swap it out for a smaller soft box and modify the internals, or I should say modify it. Put on a a light modifier. I could use a seven-inch grid with or a seven-inch reflector with a grid but I kind of wanted to feather out a little bit more. So I'll show you here the setup and we'll get going. Okay, so here's what we got here. I got a hole in the paper, a hole in this paper. The rest of it, some lights coming through as you can see, but the main portion of the hot spots here, this is gonna be over the head and what we'll do is eliminate, illuminate the head and then the rest, hopefully the light will kind of drape back down over the shoulders and everything else and give us enough light. Okay, so we got the light modifier up on the softbox. Got my camera here. We'll take a shot here and see what happens. Okay, show you it here. Uh, much more contrast, as you guys can see before, after. Um, it's hot. I pumped up the power a little bit because I thought I might need a little bit more energy or juice on on the statue being that i'm cutting down the light significantly but you can see underneath the the chin and the jawline much more shadows but again it's you know we could even this out and again it would look very clinical like something in a magazine um, a photograph of a statue in a museum kind of situation but that's we got part of the dramatic look here i'm going to even out the light but 
I think what we need in the background to give it some depth um, is some light rays. I love light rays, love fog, that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get rid of that black background that we have and uh, push in maybe a grid with a seven inch reflector light on the side, kind of like a barn door opening or something along those lines, just kind of coming across the wall. Give it some depth, give it a couple depth and also lighten it up a little bit. So it'll look like maybe you're in a building or something with that, with some windows or with some lighting. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, so I removed the black backdrop and essentially I'm gonna shoot a light across the wall. But to get this kind of right, I'm gonna do one light at a time, as always right. So I'm gonna shut down the main light and just shoot the back light to kind of show you what happens when you just kind of mix with the two. And then I'll blend back in the main light to kind of get the right adjustments because the back, the backlight's gonna throw things all out of whack because there is light reflecting everywhere. It's kind of a small place. So yeah, let's try this. Okay. Okay, as you see, uh, pretty much in darkness, the, the statue's in darkness, but you see the light kind of coming across as a streak. And that's what we want. That nice little lighting could be light rays, doors opening, um, a couple ceiling lights, anything along those lines. Could be fog in the background with light, with, with some light coming across it. Let your imagination run with it, I know. But yeah, now we need to adjust the actual photograph, the front piece of this. So we'll adjust that, take a few shots here, and uh, we'll get to the final image. Hopefully, it shouldn't take too long. I've done a little bit of this, so yeah. Okay, so turned on the, the main light with the backlight. I'll give you a shot here. I'll we'll, we'll show you what's going on. Okay, so show you this shot here. Pretty close. We need to adjust some lighting a little bit more. Maybe do a little, I don't think I'm going to fill light or do anything like that. I think I like it the way it's looking. Now I got to get into composition. So this is all shot in color so far, even though it doesn't look like color. It's still in color. We got some post processing. We got some cropping to do. The nice thing is when you're shooting something with high megapixels, you're able to crop in. And that's it. You keep it a little wider, then you can choose what you want. So you'll, a lot of times you see the entire set, but then all of a sudden you crop it and you just see a little small segment, and that's the segment you actually want. But it's nice to have 40, 50 megapixels to do that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Okay, we're back. I got rid of the, the DP3 Quattro, put it in the back here. I've mounted the Samsung S20 Ultra on here. Now this has a, I guess, 108 megapixel sensor, super small sensor, very light sensitive to noise in that. There's a couple different things we can do to clean that up. But I'm gonna give you guys an insight what I'm seeing here with the camera, kind of give you a, an overview of some of the things I'm seeing as far as the light. Now I have two lights here, one the master um, softbox with a light modifier, and the one in the back is actually the, the crossing light that you see here in the image. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. I got a couple different ways to process this. I'm gonna hit a uh, custom 108 megapixel, and then I'm gonna do multiple images of that, combine it if we need to go and lower the the noise in that to get a cleaner image. And I'm going to kind of compare it to the, the DP3 Quattro image, which is around 40 to 50 megapixels. Anyway, um, I think here I'll actually show you one of the ones I shot here. Um, this was converted into black and white. This was just one image, continuous lighting. It's the light's not very bright, but as you can see here on the screen, I'll show you, it looks actually really good for what it is. So yeah, let's go uh, 
do some post-processing, wrap this up and compare them and, and uh, call an end to it. Okay, so both pictures printed, eight by 10. Angle's a little bit off, definitely angle and where I was at, you know, with the zoom and all that jazz. But looking at it, it's very tough to tell the difference. Um, and an eight by 10, I didn't expect a huge amount of difference, but it's really close. I expected more of a difference between the lighting, your continuous lighting and flash, believe it or not. I didn't know if I could achieve the same look without the flash. But man, it looks really, really close, um, extremely close. So where do I put the Samsung? S20, 108 megapixel, definitely not 108 megapixels. That's, that's just, nah. Um, is it close to the DP3 Quattro? Not really. Uh, image quality, resolution, this is about 40 or 50, depending on who you talk to, but the, it's really sharp. It's not that sharp. I would compare it to something like in the 24 megapixel class. Something if you do it right, you shoot low SI, ISO, you shoot with the great lighting and you can post process and maybe shoot raw, do some things. I would put it up there if you do your part. But man, it's amazing what, what's coming out nowadays. Makes you rethink some things, actually. But yeah, I kind of want to know what you guys feel. Uh, doing the portrait or do the, doing the studio type work. I have a bunch of other ideas. What you think of the mobile um yeah let me know comments questions concerns and i'll see you guys next week